your outside forward of the pilot house, please cover your ears now. <laughs> This boat measures 120 feet long, 33 feet wide. It's documented at 94 gross ton, and when fully loaded, it's busy. They got a lot of construction equipment to our left here, and on the other side of these barges, there's a concrete structure, a little wall there right next to the barges. Up underneath the bridge, showing us today 53 feet. Uh, we require uh, right at 40. As we complete our turn to head downstream, we're going to be going with the current, so we're going to go faster. We're also going into the wind. So if you're seated on the outer decks and you have things that might blow, like hats or jackets or purchases you've made or small children or popcorn or hats, be sure and hang on to them. Once things go over the railing, they generally become property of the Mississippi River. Many, many years ago, we had two tribes of Indians that lived in the area. The Fox on the Missouri shore and the Illini over in Illinois. These nations of Indians were at war and would have probably annihilated each other had it not been for the big water that separated them. In the Fox tribe, there was a beautiful Indian maiden, Princess, daughter of the chief who was known far and wide for her beauty. Each evening, around sunset, she would sit atop that ledge and watch the river go by. Well, one evening, as she was seated up there, she saw a canoe put out from the Illinois shore. A young Illini brave, who had heard of her beauty, paddled across the big water and scaled that cliff just to be with her. They became friends, eventually lovers, and each evening at sundown would meet on that ledge. Finally, the chief of the fox tribe, the young maiden's father, heard of their meeting, and he forbade his daughter from ever seeing the Illini brave again. For these nations of Indians were at war, and she had disgraced him in the eyes of his tribe by associating with the enemy. The young princess disobeyed her father. She snuck out of camp and continued to meet the brave atop that rock. One evening, as she was leaving camp, the wise old chief just happened to spot her. He followed her to that ledge and found her in the arms of her lover, the brave he'd forbidden her to see. This enraged the old gentleman so much, he pulled an arrow from his quiver. He placed it in his bow, and he aimed directly at his only daughter's heart. The young brave, acting quickly, grabbed the young maiden in his arms. They ran to the edge of that ledge, took one last look, and they jumped. But as luck would have it, they landed atop a northbound Burlington freight train. <laughs> they rode the train to Keokuk, Iowa, where they opened up a trading post. They made a million dollars, had a dozen kids, and lived happily ever after. I like you.
Landing. And as we approach our landing, we invite you to visit some of the other attractions that we have in the area. 